Pasco and uh, thank you for reading my name, Pacquiao, I don't think there will be a problem for that. And it's very, very funny. And every once in a while, even my book also becomes a book. That's the opening bell for Round by Round, presented by Eastern Communications. I'm Bill Velasco. I'm E.C. Casciano. Attorney Ed Tolentino joins us later on the show. All right. The uh, first order of business, Mark Magsayo. What is up next for him? There are three uh, belts that we're going to discuss and a fourth contender na medyo masasabi nating nakikisaw-saw lang. Okay, uh, Nisi, in order of uh, ease or popularity, which do you think should Mark go for? Sino bang una niyan dapat na hamunin na uh, world champion? Well, sir, by context, ang nakuha niyang world title shot or he is now ranked number one in the WBC. So it's very obvious as si Gary Russell ang makukuha niya. But ang kinaganda dito is marami siyang options. Right now, he is ranked number four in the IBF. He, uh, but the IBF has yet to update their rankings because yung one and two are now currently vacated. Now, the belt there was won by Kid Galafad earlier this month. So possibly, uh, makuha rin niya ang title shot dito. Kaya lang problema doon ni si, di ba? Kasi ang IBF, madalas mm-hmm. gusto nila sa UK lumalaban. Eh, di ba? Parang ayaw yeah. nila palabasin yung mga kampiyon nila sa UK para may, yeah. may home crowd sila. May pagkahinebra din niya mga yan. Eh. <laughs> exactly, sir. Uh, that's one of the hindrances na pwedeng ma-encounter itong team ni Mark Magsayo. Aside from that, is we have to remember na hawak din ni Mark Magsayo itong WBO international title and by if you're going to look back at on WBO international could be the key in getting a title shot and ito nga uh, Mark Magsayo had has in his possession itong WBO international title and he could he could be he could face ito nga WBO featherweight champion na si Emmanuel Navarrete and by looking at the rankings of the WBO, he's also number four in the standing. So possible na makalaban din niya. Itong si Manuel okay. Navarrete of Mexico. Uh, bakit hindi kasali sa usapan si Laywood ng WBA? Kasi maguloy talaga yung WBA. Now, uh, by checking on the rankings of the WBA, aside na magulo nga siya, meron siyang Super champion, meron siyang interim champion, meron regular may gold, champion, silver, may gold, uh, silver. Balsa, ano pa ba? <laughs> Napaka-complicated. I think there's five champ- there are five champions in one division in WBA. Pero according to the latest update, they dropped out Mark Magsayo from the list and they have they yet to explain bakit wala sa listahan si Mark Magsayo. Pero in the last update, last month, wala si Mark Magsayo dun sa rankings. So, it's interesting kung paano mag, how will play out especially that Mark Magsayo is coming off a big a big victory against Seha over a week ago. Oh, ang uh, sa akin diyan, tingin ko ang pinakamadaling uh, kalabanin nga ay si Kid Galhad, no, si uh, Abdul Bari Awad. Kasi uh, hindi pa niya naka na tatalo yung mga elite fighters kumbaga no yes, championship exactly. pero is uh, handed uh, James Dickens two of his three losses in his career mm. no mm-hmm. the, the last one was uh, for that title shot pero ang problema nga lang doon ipupunta si Mark sa UK di ba at mm. hindi natin mapapanood dahil yung time difference <laughs> yes di ba hindi natin mapapanood uh, alanganin yung uh, oras doon uh, mm-hmm. WBA hindi natin alam napakalabo pa nung mangyayari diyan dahil uh, mm. Sabi ni Tony, sa discussion namin, ma'am, uh, makikita niyo mamaya na may, may mga, mga gulong talaga mangyayari dyan. Uh, Gary Russell, uh, interesante para kay Mark, pero parang hindi gusto ng management team niya. Exactly. Uh, but the, pero ang tinitignan ko dito is the confidence din in Mark Magsayo. He is open for this kind of challenges. Kasi 
for example, the SEA fight, it showed the qualities of being a world champion, the heart, the grit. But we have to, we have to consider that he has yet to be tested at the elite level of featherweight division. And yun nga ang gusto ko rin mangyari for Mark Magsayo uh, is activity. Uh, hindi naman mo wala kay Mark Magsayo yung status niya as number one contender or let's say the WBO international title if he keeps oh. on fighting. And Tama. to me, at least give it, give it a year or face two or three fighters in his division. It's particularly in, in the under PBC, there is a Mongolian guy that I can I can even pronounce his name that could give him a test, a real test, a real feel of the featherweight division. Because he has to earn his stripes. Eh. At the moment, wala pang nakakalaban si Mark Magsayo na to oh. say na he is, he's at the elite level. That's oh, tama. Uh, Kasi yung, uh, ano, yung dalawa sa apat na huli niyang nakalaban ay mga dating world champion na umakya uh, sa timbang. Diba? Si Uto uh, at ngayon si Seha. Kaya... Yeah. Tama yung sinasabi mo. Wala pa siyang nakakalaban na totoong, totoong featherweight. No? Pero ang isang iniisip ko dyan, kung magka, magkaroon man ng rematch si Manny Pacquiao at si Jordanis Ugas, eh malamang sa malamang ilalagay si Mark Magsayo dun sa undercard, undercard at malamang world title shot yun. Probably, sir. And and di na po siya giveaway. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to think about it because Gary Russell is fighting under PBC. So, yeah. malaking, po- possi- mal- malaking possibility na mangyari ito in case that Manny Pacquiao gets a rematch against your Dennis Ugas. Okay, and now, let's move on to our division discussion. No? Kasi may isa pang nakikisaw-saw dyan. Pero, Jack Tepora is a non-factor. He has not fought in the last two years. He's, uh, mm. he, he lost the WBA interim title. Nakikisaw-saw siya. Hinahamon niya si Mark mm. Magsayo. Well, we don't we, we really don't know the real score between these two guys. So sila lang talaga nakakaalam. But is it good for boxing? Yes, because I mean, it adds intrigue. It adds another color. It adds another layer. It's something that we didn't see in the past, diba? It adds sophistication in the characters of the boxers. And at the, cur- at the current state of boxing, hindi na nahihiya because it's, it's parang tabu eh na another Filipino boxer at the world level, at the world stage, calling out another boxer, uh, another fellow boxer from the same country. Isa lang yun sa mga parang big no-no eh. Now it gives them the liberty, liberty to market themselves by challenging another boxer. And it's true. Uh, Jack Tipora was an interim WBA champion. And kung meron man siyang gustong targetin na, well, to put him back into the conversation, eh siguro sa, siguro sa kanya, sakyan na lang natin itong hype train ni Mark Magsayo. Particularly because Mark Magsayo won in emphatic fashion. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin ang uh, tungkol sa mga welterweight dahil naglabas ng release ang uh, The Ring at... Uh, Nasa top 5 pa rin ng mga welterweight si Manny Pacquiao pero panlima na lang siya. Hmm. O nandun sa unang pwesto si Errol Spence, si Sean Porter, pangatlo na po si Jordanis Ugas. Uh, parang may mali doon missing. Ano sa tingin mo? Well, Sir Bill, I have to agree with the list. We shouldn't be surprised that Ugas, Ugas or Dennis Ugas moved up to number 3 after the victory over Manny Pacquiao. As we all see, the champions in the division occupy the top three. Plus, the victory over Pacquiao warranted him to be up there in the rankings. If Ugas gets the rematch against Manny Pacquiao or Ugas gets a title defense against Jamal James, the regular WBA champion at the moment, of course, until na tanggal nila in WBA regular, or a rematch with Sean Porter, and then he wins, it's possible that he could switch up places with Crawford. Remember, Crawford hasn't fought any boxer rank on that list yet. Tama. And his last fight was against Kelbrook. And to be honest, 
This is the funny part. This is the funny part. I don't know why and how WBA, WBO sanctioned that fight to be a official title defense for Terence Crawford. On the other hand, I don't know how long Manny Pacquiao will hold on to the number five spot with because of Virgil Ortiz Jr. Virgil Ortiz Jr. is on the rise. And considering Manny Pacquiao's plans this coming election, it could put him on the shelf in the meantime. So let's ex- don't be surprised or let's expect that Manny Pacquiao could uh, further deep his position in that rankings. Now let's introduce our Eastern Communications fearless fighter, a name that you are all familiar uh, with. Kilalang kilala po ninyo pero matagal na natin hindi nababalitaan. Oscar De La Hoya, 1996 Olympic gold medalist. Nagretiro po labing tatlong taon na nakalilipas mula nung mapahiya siya kay Manny Pacquiao. At kakalabanin niya ang dating MMA fighter na si Vitor Belfort na may tumataginting na 1-0 record. <laughs> ano po kaya ang nag-udyok dito? Dahil uh, malaking kahihiyan po yung nangyari kay uh, De La Hoya nung nilabanan niya si Pacquiao. Una-una, uh, promoter siya. Ang laki-laki ng weight difference nila. He had not fought at that weight in six years and he went down to fight Pacquiao. Yes. Pangalawa, ang balita ko, hindi niya mapospon yung laban kahit may shoulder injury siya dahil siya yung promoter. At uh, alaskadong alaskado po siya sa mga media sa Amerika dahil nga pumatol sa mas maliit. Tapos natalo pa siya. No? After eight rounds, he could no longer continue. So officially, he, he retired from the bout. Ano kaya ang dahilan ni si at ito lalaban na naman siya MMA fighter pa kakalaban. Sir, correction lang ha. Uh, 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 Vitor Belfort is still active and he signed a contract with one championship two, I think two years ago. Now going back to Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya has nothing more to prove inside the boxing ring. Like he won 11 world titles in six weight classes, won the cash cow of boxing and like you mentioned an Olympic gold medalist. If he has nothing more to prove, why is he making a comeback? And a lot of normal and regular people won't understand this. But individuals like Oscar De La Hoya are wired to live and breathe the sweet science. He started boxing at the age of six. Basically, it's the only thing he can do in his life, which explains why He's a boxing promoter today. You can take the man out of boxing, but you can't take the boxing out of the man. I think uh, I think he's doing this because he can't live with the fact as to how he ex- exited the sport. And so it's more of doing it for himself than giving the fans a ride down memory lane. Uh, Vitor is going to be an intriguing matchup for Oscar De La Hoya because Vitor has a good hands for mixed martial arts. Though he managed to knock out several fighters in the past with his hands, let me be clear, in mixed martial arts or inside the cage, boxing has a different dynamics. Of course... Tama. Alam mo, technically, pala, technically pag-usapan po natin yan, no? Mm. Yung stance or yung tindig pa lang, magkaibang magkaiba. Yes, uh, sa boxing, nakatagilid ka kasi ang pumipihit ka f- for your power punch. Diba? Mm. Kung alipa, ang kanan ang, ang, ano, ang gusto mo ibagsak na suntok, mm. yung kaliwa ang nakaharap dun sa kalaban mo. Sa MMA po, baliktad po yan. Nakadiretso mm. ang harap mo, no? face-to-face ka kasi mm. sumisipa mm. kayo sa MMA. And yes, I saw yes. that when, uh, when, when Conor McGregor tried to become a boxer. Diba? Parang <laughs> malaking yes, kahihiyan nyo pero kumita naman sa malaki. So, ang tanong dyan is how do you see this possible fight going? Well, it's going to be interesting as to how things will, will play out. Uh, by looking at the footage of Vitor Belfort's training videos, I can truly say that he is in good shape. But it's a safe bet to put your money on Oscar De La Hoya because Simply put, Oscar is fighting in his comfort zone. Though, uh, though Vitor Belfort has knocked out a lot of people 
using his hands. The problem is in MMA, yun nga eh, you're setting up a takedown, you're setting up a leg kick, you're setting up a head kick. Means ang daming facets eh, to worry about before getting that knockout. So you can set up this leg kick and then pag kumagat yung opponent mo, you can follow up with the right straight. And I think yun lang yung nakikita kong problem that Vitor Belfort will be limited because other weapons in his arsenal hindi niya magagamit. And let's say na, yes, he has a one-bout experience in boxing. That is not enough against a Oscar De La Hoya. And the last fight of Vitor Belfort inside the boxing ring, let's remember, let's take note, it's in, two, it's in 2006. 2021 na po tayo ngayon. At hindi lang yun, Missy, no? uh, tandaan din natin, mas makapalang gloves sa boxing. Yes. Diba? Kaya uh, yeah. yung, yung, yung lakas na suntok mo, medyo napupuro ng yes. konti. Uh, yes, and aside from that, the defense. Okay, in MMA, you have a small gloves, eh, di ba? And you can only do too little much. Little so, so much because of the gloves. Pero ito sa boxing kasi, ang laki. You can use your gloves, your 8-ounce gloves now. In the in the fight, they're going to be using 10 ounce because it's light heavyweight. Alak yung difference eh. Malaki yung gloves, they could easily defend themselves. And ano ang gagawin ni Peter Belfort once uh in that kind of dynamics. And that's going to be interesting. Uh, at saka, gaya ng sinasabi ko madalas, you can have a great plan until you get hit. Yes. Kaya tingnan natin. Pero mukhang ano, maganda naman ang condition ni De La Hoya. It's just that I foresee he's going to be very slow because he's heavier uh, than he was the last time. He hasn't fought uh, mm. for 13 years. That's a lot of ring rust. Mm -mm. I agree. And he hasn't fought over 13 years. 13 years. So over 12 years. And that's my concern. And he's fighting at a weight class that hindi naman niya nilabanan yun because the, the fight is going to be held at light heavyweight. So right. that's a different story. Sa kalagitan ng linggo, sinabi ng WBA na gagawin nilang isang champion for life si Manny Pacquiao. Yan ang pag-uusapan namin ni Attorney Ed Tolentino. The century-old World Boxing Association on Wednesday announced that they would make Manny Pacquiao a champion for life. Now, this again waters down the WBA even more as they've been known to be just churning out championships left and right. In the year 2000, Lennox Lewis suggested a higher championship, a super champion, because he was asked to give up his WBA heavyweight title before fighting Michael Grant. Now, the original intention of the super championship was for a WBA champion who was also a champion of one of the other major organizations. Tony Ed, ano ba ang pananaw mo dito sa kalokohang ito? Alam mo, itong WBA talagang magulo ito. No? Ang kanilang titulo, sindami ng mga diploma dyan sa recto. Ano? Uh, yung super championship, in my opinion, or oh, let's, let's start first with the decision of the WBA to give Pacquiao that uh, champion for life belt. Okay? Ano ba naman yun? Ano, what is he champion of? Oo, oh, oh, diba? una-una. Ceremonial belt lang po yon. Hindi po ito idedepensa ni Manny Pacquiao. Ah, at pangalawa, it tricks of hypocrisy. Nung hinihingi ni Manny Pacquiao yung kanyang super belt sa WBA, ayaw ibalik ng WBA kasi eh, inactive ka eh. Medyo matagal kang nawala eh. Ngayon, bibigyan mo ako ng champion for life belt. <laughs> eh, samantala yung itong belt ko. Kay, yun din ang ginawa nila kay your Dennis Pugas, di ba? Yes, so, yes. Yung regular champion, bigla siyang inakyat. Yes. ang super champion na wala naman siyang ibang hawak na titulo. At wala naman siyang ginawa to earn, to, to earn super champion status. Ano? At nakikiride on lang ang WBA kasi after the fight, Pacquiao was getting so much publicity mileage. Uh, people are saying retirement of a legend, etc. etc. So ang WBA nakikisaw-saw. Pero sa totoo lang, Bill, maraming problema ang WBA. It is now facing possible sanctions from the Association of Boxing Commissions in the United States. Ito yung grupo ng mga boxing associations sa US. They are threatening sanctions dahil napakaraming belt talaga. Sobra-sobra. May regular belt, may interim belt, may gold belt, at nabuking sa isang uh, latest na laban for an interim WBA welterweight belt. Doon sa laban ni Michael Fox at ni Gabriel Muestre, 
isa sa mga cornermen ni Moise Trey turned out to be a WBA employee. Nako, nako if okay, conflict of interest yan. yan. Yes, kaya ngayon po ipit na ipit ang WBA. Nagpapapogi, ibinigyan ng uh, champion for life belt itong si Pacquiao at later on inanunsyo ng WBA tatanggalin na raw nila lahat ng interim belt at pipilitin na magharap ang regular champion at super champion to come up with a solitary champion. So, tinan natin kung magagawa ng WBA ito because they're facing a lot of heat and possible sanctions. One sanctions is baka hindi sila payagang mag-stage ng laban sa United States. Mabigat yun. At yun ang pinakamasakit sa lahat, uh, Attorney Ed. Kasi unang-una, they were the original no? oh. international uh, boxing group because they dated back when they were still the national boxing yes. association in the 1920s. And in the, it was only in the 60s that they became the World Boxing Association. Diyan po natin nakilala si na Muhammad Ali, lahat ng mga sikat na boksingero nung araw, bago pa nagsulputan yung mga WBC, IBF, tapos WBO. Yung WBO, yun ang pinakabata sa mga organisasyon nung 1980s lang po yan na nabuo. And uh, originally, Tama. para mabigyan ng puwang si, si Tommy Hearns dahil masikip na dun sa mga kabilang grupo dahil may Sugar Ray Leonard, may, <laughs> may Duran, may Hagler, ang and, daming kalaban kaya nagkaroon ng madaming organisasyon pero sayang naman sayang naman yung isang daang taon ng WBA kung masisira ang pangalan nila kaya gumagawa sila ng paraan bill para maiayos ang kalilang mga championship rules para magkaroon ng solitary champion pero napakarami po yung mga interim champion halos dalawang po yung mga regular champion halos tatlong po ay kailangan ayusin yan ng WBA sapagkat under pressure na sila ngayon. Sayang, sila pa naman ang pioneer. Tama ang yung sinabi. Eh ngayon, eh, lumalabas sila ang pioneer when it comes to greed. Sapagkat yung po mga titulong yan, merong sanctioning fee. May bayad po yan. Kahit na anong titulo ng WBA, magbabayad ka. So, the more titles, the more sanctioning fee. Ngayon, kailangan magjeta sila. Ang mga sakit pa, pa niya, pag tinignan mo yung listahan ng kanila mga super champions, sasabi mo, Sino tong mga to? Hindi po sila mga kilalang tao. Yung your Dennis Ugas nga, hindi naman niyan kilala. Nagkataon lang na, na, na si Maidana po eh, nagkaroon ng injury, hindi rin makalaban. Pareho sila ng timbang ni Manny Pacquiao. Sila na lang ang pinaglaban. Kaya maikli po yung fight card nung nakaraang linggo dahil uh, nabawasan ng isang laban. Tapos lumalabas pa yung ratings. Yung ratings ngayon na parang Parang mas mataas pa ngayon ang rating ni Ugas kaysa kay Manny Pacquiao. I don't think that one fight will do that. Talagang napakasagwa na tignan ng WBA. Totoo yun, totoo yun. Kaya kailangan they have to clean up their act because meron na nakaka-notice ng mga kritiko, mga experts, mga boxing commission sa Amerika and they are threatening sanctions if they do not clean up their act. And that's the final bell for today's episode of Round by Round presented by Eastern Communications. I'm Bill Velasco. I'm Nisi Kashano. We're on Facebook at 6 p.m. Monday to Friday and on our YouTube channel right after. Like, follow, share, and subscribe now. Delis Principe, Real Insangalia, and Boyet Season are working the fights for you tomorrow. Catch them on the next Round by Round. All boxing, all Filipino, all the time. See you.